Uh, well, b before uh, we started Gallon Drunk, I I'd played in other you know, small bands out in the country where I lived outside London. And, um, you know, like a lot of people, I learned some instruments at school, but, uh, and then, yeah, ma mainly it's, it's Gallon Drunk was really sort of my first band, actually. I grew up um, <coughs> in a place called Guildford, which is about 30 miles out of London, so it's quite close, so, um, so I could still get into London to go and see gigs in the sort of 80s, really. Things like um, Einstein Sender, Neubauten, Swans, Sonic Youth, The Birthday Party, all, all sorts of stuff, really. But, um, and listening to music, I really liked a lot of old blues music and jazz music before starting Gallon Drunk and, you know, so quite a lot of different things, really. And, and then just sort of loved things like the Stooges and the Stones. And when, even when we started Gallon Drunk, no, none of us could really play that well, you know. It was more just the excitement, the fun of just making this big, thrilling noise. So uh, that's sort of how it started. The first person I was doing it with was called Mike Delanian, and uh, I actually went to school with him. And we, we started doing like recordings um, just at home and, and it is at his house and stuff. And then we ended up doing rehearsals and getting different people in. And eventually we actually, it was when I, I was living in London, I moved into a house and all, all the people in the house were friends and they happened to have instruments and it just seemed logical we, like i say we, we were just doing it for fun really and and then we just start, started doing some gigs and um someone signed us pretty quickly to a, a fairly small label but um within a, a you know a couple of months i'm not playing the organ anymore but i, I did um play the organ in gallon drunk i still do on the records but live i don't play it anymore was asked in about 2003 or so to join the Bad Seeds and um, I was sent this list of songs by Nick Cave, it was like you know, 50 songs and I was listening to it thinking oh my god. I'd met him in the early 90s and got on tour with him in the States in 94 when Blixer couldn't do a tour so I, I was playing the guitar then but when Blixer left I rang Nick up and said oh you know, how about it? And he went, oh, I was actually thinking of an organist instead. So I went, oh, oh well. <clears throat> and then rang him back about half an hour later going, well, I can play the organ, why don't I do it? And so I ended up doing that. And as I say, he sent me this list of songs and they were all in these weird keys. And I was like, oh, I don't think, I don't think I can play this. So I had to, you know, for about two months at home, I just really, really taught myself how to play it properly. With Gallon Drunk, it's, it's not perfect, you know, you don't have to have technical perfection. I mean, but, you know, Terry's a fantastic sax player. I Ian's a phenomenally good drummer, you know, just brilliant. And I I Ian's been in the group since 1993. So's Terry. And, um, but it's, it's not really about that. It's about feel and heart and soul. And I, I know proficiency helps, enables you to get that across but it's it's quite sort of simple music in a way and um, I think even more so now it's becoming a it's about a groove and a feel rather than any sort of virtuoso solos or anything horrible like that when we're playing a gig it's I don't know maybe, maybe it's probably the same for a lot of people but it's about us it's about taking yourself somewhere else, you know, and just just getting totally lost in the lost in the music, and you know we're enjoying it, uh, and that that's the only way we could gauge whether you know if it's good or not. It's just whether we're totally, you know, going on a it's like going on a little trip or something, you know. When we're not on tour, um, we don't rehearse very much. We we we. Re rehearse for tours and for a record but we don't rehearse regularly i mean we should do because it's it's just fun to do but um you know i sometimes 
I'm writing music all the time, just, you know, just doing stuff on GarageBand on my computer. So just getting ideas, but, you know, we don't all see each other every day. Even, even though, you know, we all live in the same town, and we're all really good friends, but it doesn't, we're not necessarily, I think it's just as important as well, though, to have that sort of bond between people. You know, you, for the sort of thing we're doing, you, you know, you have to be friends, you have to be close to one another, and it, just socialising with each other can, can be as, well, it's probably more fun than playing, but it's, um, it's just as important, it really is. You know, our band's been going a long time and it becomes, in a way, almost inevitable that you're going to cross paths, you're going to meet certain people who either you... You know, like-minded souls out there doing... not necessarily the same style of music, but I think you, you just end up coming across these people and, you know, we, we all play with different people when we're not doing Gallon Drunk even though this is obviously the, the totally central thing. I was a member of Faust, the German um, group that started in about 1969. I was playing with them for about seven years. That was mind-blowing. The first gig I did with them, I had turned up at a gig and they said... I'd had this emergency telephone call saying, oh, we, we need you to play the guitar, and it was such an unlikely band, you know, for me, and it was so open-minded of them to ask me. And I, but I went to this... <laughs> venue. I, I had to fly from somewhere I was at and I got to um, London then got on a train, went all the way to the other side of England and turned up at this venue and it was like five minutes to the gig and I didn't know any of their music. I think I knew one song and I was given a set list and it was just a load of drawings and sort of stupid shapes and things and they're going, this is it, we're going to do this. And I thought, well, OK. And uh, I had a guitar with me, but they gave me an organ as well, and it didn't even have a plug on it, so it's like, oh, I don't know what to do with that. And then it was just this mad free music with a guy playing, you know, with a chainsaw and setting off all these smoke bombs, and, and they, they are in their mid-60s, you know, and it's really, really inspiring. And, and something completely different would be, you know, we made records with Lydia Lunch, tour with her, you know, friends with Lydia, and... Um, it's a, a, a totally different approach, but again, really rewarding and she's such a fun person to be with and that really brought out a different way of playing for, certainly for Ian and me, um, because I sort of neglected the guitar and Gallon Drunk. It was more just interjections, I just sort of hit it every now and then, whereas with that it's big riffs and I think combination of doing that and Faust led us towards the way the gallon drunk sounds now and and you know with the bad seeds playing that when i was playing with them it was eight people in the group so it was a really big band and we did this tour with a gospel choir as well so it's like a little orchestra almost and it was so cool for me having done years of being um sort of the front sort of the front person of Gallon Drunk and well at least the singer and to just stand there and focus on playing the keyboards I loved it it was such fun and just to listen to this whole big thing going off you know uh, Terry um, has played with PJ Harvey he's done brass on uh, a couple of her records and some live stuff and we did a really long tour with her in 1992 and you know, sometimes we'd sort of jam together. We'd do like a song at the end of the set and all, all play together. That was kind of fun. Yeah, no, she was great. And uh, I still occasionally do stuff with the, the original drummer, Rob Ellis from PJ Harvey, who's just a brilliant drummer, actually. And he's a producer now, and he sometimes gets myself or Terry in to do stuff. And it's nice, you know, it's like a big circuit of friends, really. It's just totally different being I, the, the singer. It's, you know, Gallon Drunk is four people. It's, I, I don't really think of it as being like a total, you know, the, the front person. I mean, I have to stand at the front, so it's, it's literally the front. I mean, I always used to stand at the side because I hated being right in the middle, but um, I've sort of got used to it. But, you know, it's a band. It's, it's, not, um, it's not a dictatorship, Gallon Drunk, at all. I, I, I don't think. And sometimes that works really well, you know, with, um, like with Lydia, it's a, just a total sort of two-way collaboration. You know, she does the words, 
uh, and it's usually I do the music or Ian and myself. And um, whereas obviously with the Bad Seeds, the focus is Nick Cave, you know, it's Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. It was pretty democratic, I think, when I was playing with him on that record, Abattoir Blues. You know, he obviously wrote all the songs, primarily, and, you know, people would make up their own parts, and it t seemed to be obvious if things didn't work or did work or whatever, and... Um, no, it was... But, I mean, with, with Gallon Drunk, it's... All the input of everyone, it, it wouldn't work, it wouldn't exist, you know, without Leo, Terry and, and Ian it wouldn't sound the same, you know. It's the four of us and the, the sound of those people. You know, we've done this for such a long time together that it, you almost, be, you know, it, it's become what we are rather than what we play. At, you know, we are this band, so to speak, and it's, that's how it works. With the Bad Seeds, um, I've, I actually enjoyed the festival here on the island. That was really cool. I don't know, I can't really remember, to be honest. We played on a funny little pit. The first gig we did for that Abattoir Blues record, there was a sort of warm-up gig on a very small pier on the English seaside. That was great. That was a really nice experience. Um, I haven't really heard... I haven't heard the last Bad Seeds record, and Lydia's making sort of a record every five minutes so it's quite hard to, to keep up with what she's doing I mean, she always sends me stuff and um, and she's just yeah she's just got a new record out actually um, but I mean sort of for the last year I've been so focused on doing our stuff and trying to write it and where we've been trying to change the way the band sounds quite quite not not a radical departure but it's it's definitely different and been so sort of locked into that i haven't really been following for the new record i mean for the for the new the, this record a lot of it when i was writing the demos i wasn't really listening to anything i'd just press record pick a drum beat and just do something and just see if it was exciting and i, I just had about 70 of these ideas and then just went through them. anything that sounded like a song we've done before i just deleted it and then we ended up with sort of 10 or 15 songs that we then rehearsed. And I don't know what the main influence was. I was, trying, I, I was actually trying not to listen to the stuff I always listen to, which, would, which is totally predictable, you know. And when we were in the studio, we were listening to Noi, the German group, uh, James Brown, uh, NWA, surprisingly, a um, lot of Jimi Hendrix. Um, yeah, m m uh, probably more, slightly more sort of trippy stuff. Yeah, so we had a record out two years ago, so it's quite quick to do another one. I, I've read it described as a companion record to it, but I didn't really think of it like that. I mean, lyrically, it's, it's musically, it's different, so lyrically, it had to be different because the same sort of style just didn't work with this, the music being different. And um, we're very keen and determined to make it more sort of kraut rock and more trippy and more like sort of funkadelic or something like that and um, to not use some of the things we always do like harmonica or slide guitar or even solo saxophones thought let's just give that a rest for this record and do something else but it was quite a long process but the studio where we record in Hamburg um, is where the record label is and um, so we we're able to spend more time on it and focus on it completely because, uh, you know, we stay in the studio. Look, for example, the, the, the initial recording, we were there for something like two weeks. And I think I went into Hamburg, the actual town, once. And the rest of the time, we just in the studio. It's just a really nice place, you know, and the, the people who run the label are, are sort of friends. So it's just, just a really lovely, very, very creative atmosphere and um, we were able to spend more time on it and really focus on just making it sound a bit more out there. You know, I won't bore you with um, technical things, but... <laughs> well, on the record, there's some really big uh, brass sections and all this sort of stuff, which we just knew, obviously, there's, there's no way we could do that live. We can't bring a whole brass section with us so had to completely rethink them 
and like the first song on the record is piano and drums, like a nine minute song, and we haven't got a piano with us. It's just thought, oh, it's just too heavy. Like, look, we can't be bothered to carry it in and out of the van. But, but it also meant, you know, rethinking it and doing it on the guitar, and immediately they're different, and the, the songs are getting longer and longer and more trippy. And we were listening to a lot of Velvet Underground bootlegs in the studio as well. I mean, there's, there's some fantastic ones and you know that was a big inspiration as well so we're really letting this, the songs really stretch out and it's God, it's such fun doing it and it's all, a lot of it is improvised with the new stuff so we're really playing with one another you know act to each other so it so therefore it, it just doesn't get boring because you know you never know what's going to happen it's really really good fun I really like playing, well, basically playing the new ones. Um, the Soul of the Hour, the title track, that's great to play. Um, the Speed of Fear, that's the last track off the new record. That's really good fun to play. It's got, it's just like a two note droning riff just got with the sort of James Brown drumming and you just get totally lost in it. It's just so, so lovely. I, just fantastic, it's such good fun. There's not much visual planning at all for the stage apart from turn the lights down or maybe just have red lights and and it's and that's simply because it's easier to get lost in the music, you know, and not distracted by anything. It's just I'd be happy if we played in the dark, frankly. But um, and for the for the look of the records, that was really important as well. It's got a lovely cover that's a detail of a painting that. We were really stuck. I couldn't think of anything. I tried all these stupid ideas. It's because usually I come up with the ideas, and nothing was really good. And I was literally lying, at, um, um, just just got up one morning, and there's you know there's a painting hanging on the wall. And I just thought, why, why not just try that? And um, so we ended up using it. It's a painting by Ian uh, Ian Drum Ian Drummer Ian. His, his brother did it. So it's again, it's a really nice thing. It's sort of, you know, and photos are by uh, friends of ours. It's all a very close knit thing, you know. It's quite physical gig. And it's just so, like last night come off and particularly um, myself and Ian just sort of sitting there going, oh, just sweat pouring off. And my clothes are in such a disgusting state. Um, and, you know, it's just a really lovely euphoric thing. and and then almost straight away, because it, you just forget about it. It's like, wow, that was great. What? You know, we, we don't sit there and sort of really discuss it particularly, because usually it's just this, unless it's a disaster, but, but it's, yeah, usually it just takes you somewhere and it's a bit of a, I keep saying it's a bit of a trip, but, but it is, you know.